so much for joining us on this Monday edition of the Worldwide Transmission. We're going to be live here for the next three hours, and I am surveying western areas of the United States uh, to uh, see for myself how much globalism and the tattletale control freak society has expanded. I will have reports for you later in the hour uh, on basically what I have witnessed while we have been out here. I am now in southern Utah, crossing over from the Grand Canyon in Arizona yesterday, and I've already filed some of those video reports at Infowars.com, but I'm going to be filing more as soon as I can get to a spot that has good internet. I am literally 100 miles from nowhere, as the Dwight Yoakam uh, song uh, says. In fact, I'm probably 500 miles from nowhere, and so all we've got is a landline. That's another reason I'm uh, engaging in this trip, is I plan to travel around the country a lot next year, giving speeches and uh, visiting our AM and FM affiliates. And just unfortunately, we even tried to go up on a mountaintop of the RV, and it just would not uh, connect, so we're here via landline. We have quite a broadcast lined up for you today, to say the very least. And we're going uh, to be uh, breaking all that down here in just a moment and just the unbelievable quickening of what's happening. We have Gerald Salente joining us with an update on what's happening with uh, MF Global basically uh, grabbing somewhere between 700 and a billion dollars of their clients' money and, and first saying J.P. Morgan had it now saying they don't know where it is, and I, and I guess the federal government, because most of the regulators, including the head of the CFTC, were invested uh, with Mr. Corzine. Of course, they all got the warning to get out early, like the, like the Koch brothers. Uh, so this is a new level of where they just take the money out of your segregated personal account. I've done some research. Those are supposedly guaranteed as well through another system, but now they're saying, no, this is the new way things work. We're taking your money. So Gerald Salente is going to be joining us. Jesse Ventura, you got to get him while he's hot because he's about to go back to uh, Mexico, at least for a few months, is going to be joining us. We'll talk more about will he run for president. Uh, I've now talked to Libertarian Party people. They certainly would like to entertain that. Uh, we also have uh, Max Kaiser joining us about the importance of the MF Global fiasco. And InfoWars nightly co-host, nightly news co-host Aaron Dykes uh, will also be in Austin, Texas, riding shotgun uh, with us as backup in case I have any technical difficulties. He'll also uh, be adding quite a bit of his expert analysis and historical commentary uh, to backstop what we're covering here. We're going to go to break in a moment, and I'll come back and run through the unbelievable developments. But here's just some of them. New York Times tries to blame political film for White House shooting. Guess what political film? That's right, the Obama deception. Continuing, Egypt's brutal military junta is supported by Obama administration. Remember CIA Anderson Cooper? Oh, it's so gracious, the democracy in, uh, in uh, Egypt, as they kicked out the old dictator who wasn't brutal enough and now just machine gun people in mass and beat their heads in. And the Egyptian military is saying, look at the police in America. They shoot and kill people. So now America is an example of evil, not an example of good. Uh, continuing, uh, if there's a run on the banks, know who to blame by Paul Joseph Watson. I asked Paul to write that article last night because I discovered Forbes did a big article on us a few days ago with the headline, talk show host and guest, talk show host Alex Jones and guest call for run on banks. What we said is the globalists are going to pick people off one by one and steal your bank accounts outright also put all these crazy fines and fees on it. And so what MF Global and others are doing is going to destroy confidence. That's already happening with people getting their money out of the big mega banks. We'll be right back after the break. It is an incredibly jam-packed transmission. I'm Alex Jones, PrisonPlanet.tv. But of course, the news is loaded. And uh, chief among them is this so-called assassination plot where uh, the accused assassin has been linked to none other than Alex Jones's Obama deception. Uh, they've got the guy who allegedly sold him the gun, quoting that he knows he watched the Obama deception produced and written by Alex Jones. He doesn't recall, however, if Mr. Ortega ever talked of taking violent action, but he does recall the political 
film he watched online. Uh, so that's very interesting tie-in as they've repeatedly tried to demonize this broadcast and other alternative news. And furthermore, you see a resurgence of this talking point where now you're supposed to watch what you say. You have to be careful who and how you criticize. You've got the Christian Post reporting, uh, quoted here in Kurt Nemo's article, that conservatives and faith leaders warn Christians to be more careful of how they criticize political opponents after court documents reveal that the suspect in the White House shooting, Oscar Romero Ortega Hernandez, believe President Obama to be the Antichrist. So just like in the Tucson shooting and other incidents, you see an attempt to blame uh, the rhetoric in media for actual attempted violent action, or in the case of Tucson, actual violent action. Uh, we have Alex back on the line. Yes, uh, Aaron, I'm lucky to have any um, phone service at all. I'm here in Monument Valley, Utah, where they have to truck the water in, and so it's like back in the 19, back in the 1940s, this was John Wayne's uh, favorite place to hang out, even when he wasn't shooting more than more than ten of his famous uh, films here, um, like The Searchers and A Yellow Ribbon. But we are here, basically tracking uh, globalist activities. I left the Grand Canyon uh, yesterday. I'll have reports on that for people uh, coming up in the third hour today. Again, I join you by phone, not by our crystal clear. Skype audio and video uh, because I'm back in the 1940s here in beautiful uh, Monument Valley and we've just got incredible video from inside the Grand Canyon, uh, the UN signs, uh, a, a local uh, tourist basically uh, gets upset uh, that uh, I'm even talking about the UN taking over America uh, and gets mad at me. All of that is is uh, coming up later today, and we've got a jam-packed broadcast lined up for you as well. And again, Aaron Dykes there uh, is in studio with us in case I have uh, any technical uh, difficulties. Uh, continuing here uh, with just some of the headlines, Aaron was just getting into this. New York Times tries to blame political film for White House shooting. The political film is the Obama deception. And we've got all these, quote, conservative Christian leaders coming out and saying, don't criticize the government. It's not of the Lord. That's all part of the FEMA clergy response team situation. Very frightening that they continue to have so-called friends of all these different shooters come out and blame our films. When my film, The Obama Deception, says Obama is a puppet and not even a bad person, he's a teleprompter reading minion, a nobody, and that it's the mega banks, the Council on Foreign Relations, the, 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 the private Federal Reserve. We never call for offensive violence. And I don't believe for a minute his so-called friend that's quoted in the New York Times, just like with Poplowski, the guy that shot three cops. And, and within two hours, the Southern Poverty Law Center connected writer who later uh, had to retract, uh, five different publications had to retract, had all had said that he shot the cops because of me. When they, when, when they actually released his full searching record and what he was visiting, it was hundreds of sites, including Fox News, CNN, and it turned out Richard Poplowski hated Alex Jones, hated Infowars.com, and posted on all the big white supremacist sites, posted on our site attacking us, and the system knew it and didn't care with it. In two hours, the cops weren't even cold yet. They blamed us when it was he was drunk with pit bulls. His mother, he was a mama's boy. Uh, he got threw out of the Marine Corps. She said, you're not going to have a second dog. They're, go they're crapping all over the floor. Excuse my French. And he threw a fit. She said, I'm calling the police to throw you out. At you know, 4 a.m. in the morning, they showed up, and he shot him with his semi-auto AK-47. Okay, so that's what happened there. And within two hours of him being in handcuffs, they came out on the news and said he did it for Alex Jones. They went into his computer and said, look, this guy's attacking Alex Jones. We'll blame him. Same thing with Tucson. I got blamed for it. Turned out the guy was attacking me. He was a big liberal and then fried his brain on a bunch of drugs and was connected to psychiatrists as usual. Now it turns out this guy, they're saying, watch the Obama deception. And so that's the one reason he must have done this when I explained the first 10 minutes of it that Obama is built up to be destroyed so that he'll take the political blame for the globalist agenda, just like the next Republican they put in, uh, might not even be a bad person individually, but will still be politically destroyed and blame for the entire agenda. This is very, 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 very dangerous. And that's why you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the FBI 
FBI visited us three days before the Obama deception was released. They delivered a gag order to us, would not say why they were there, but kept asking about the Obama deception. In the days after, they would call up and, and ask my employees questions about it. And then, of course, I had a gag order. All I could say is the FBI came here. And then, of course, it later came out in the news that they had indeed been to our office. Folks thought that was some stunt. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on almost 100 AM and FM affiliates. We're on XM, Global Shortwave. We have 3 million listeners a day. We don't need to pull studs, okay? We have the New York Times and all these other giant publications attacking us all over the place right now, trying to set us up for violence so that when they SWAT team us or kill us or do whatever they're going to do to me, that they can basically rationalize the whole thing. They're trying to paint us as violent so they can have the pretext to come after us. They've got the Internet kill switch bill they're pushing. They've got all this other legislation coming out. Uh, they've got this legislation where under copyright, there's no due process. They can shut down any website. It's on. Why is Infowars.com being attacked? Why is the Obama deception being attacked? Why is Alex Jones being attacked? Because we hit the bullseye. We're over the target, dropping heavy poundage, pounding the enemy, blowing them to kingdom come in the info war. We know the pen is mightier than the sword. We know the film is a trillion times mightier than the sword. We understand that speech and ideas are bulletproof and cannot be defeated. And we're not backing down. We're going head on into this black hole of the new world order. We're going in, through, and beyond. And nothing is going to stop us at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what happens to Alex Jones. It doesn't matter what happens to InfoWars.com. That's the reason we're so attacked by the COINTELPRO and the disinfo ops. From below we're attacked, from above we're attacked by establishment media, you name it. We are under total bombardment because we are on on target. We are over the enemy targets, just like the whole World War II saying, how do you know when you're over the target? It's because you see the black smoke trying to block everything out. You get into that fog of war, and here comes the strafing. Here comes the anti-aircraft uh, chaff. Here comes the exploding shells putting all the metal into the air to fly through your engines and blow you out. We are under globalist attack big time because we are actually having a giant effect. We had Forbes magazine just two days ago come out and say talk show host Alex Jones and guest call for run on banks. What we said is it's going to cause a run on banks as these global mega banks and brokerage firms start stealing people's sequestered accounts. But that's how they're trying to spin it. New York Times, Forbes, just the attacks continue. MSNBC, uh, Nightline, just pounding and attacking savagely because they don't know how to deal with us. They'd love to kill me in a New York minute, but they know it'll turn us into a martyr. They know that I've studied history. They know that I'm committed and don't care, and they understand that, and they don't know how to deal with it. So they're trying to assassinate our character. So I hope you all realize what we're facing here. I want to give you some of the news and throw it to Aaron. New York Times tries to blame political film for White House shooting. Egypt's brutal military junta is supported by Obama administration. Big six pesticide manufacturers to face human rights crisis. If there is a run on the banks, know who to blame. A graphic video of brutal crackdown on Tahrir Square protesters in Cairo, praised by our loving government. Egyptian military justifies murder of protesters by pointing to American police. Curling up in a ball to avoid police violence may be considered active resistance. There's videos coming out of people curled up in balls being billy clubbed and rubber bulleted and pepper sprayed. And the police are saying, this is the new freedom. You are resisting us when you curl up in a ball. You must stick your chin out and say, please break my jaw. Again, this is just the total wickedness that's coming into America as the banks prepare to suck everything absolutely dry. Joining us today in about 40 minutes, Jesse Ventura with breaking news and information. Coming up in about 12 minutes, we've got Gerald Salente on the latest on MF Global saying we're not going to tell you where the $700 to $1 million in customer money went. That's all coming up. And Max Kaiser on MF Global and how big this is and the fact that the media admits that's what's hammering markets right now. It is Monday, November 21st, 2011. This is the Info War, and I am wound up.